Hi guys, welcome to a special Iron Kaiser Gaming Report as we take a look at the Age of Empires 3 Small April Update patch notes that were just released. This is the public update preview, so the patch itself has not dropped yet. I think within the Iron Realm, we're going to call this the Post Noob Cup patch because this update was announced just after our Noob Cup 2 for AoE 3 wrapped up. So let's go ahead and dive into the patch notes. First, we've got some game notes, but these are all just basic fixes to out of memory issues, visual effects, crashes, some really important good stuff that's making the game more stable, but it's not going to affect the balance at all. Now, let's dive in here. First, we've got some general notes. The Conquistador, the Jesuit unique unit, it now inflicts one area damage with ranged attacks. And I will admit, I really don't understand the point of this. If I'm understanding this right, this is uh, an area of effect damage bonus that's being added to the Conquistador, which is really nice, inflicting one area damage, one point of damage, unless I'm missing something, and I could imagine I am. Maybe there's some uh, behind-the-scenes mechanic that really makes this worthwhile, but I really don't see how useful it is to inflict one AoE damage. So, uh, somebody who wants to jump into the comments below, maybe explain what the idea behind this is, I would love some help on this one, because I don't get it. What is an undeniable buff? Conquistador's siege damage increased to 14 from 9, so that's basically a, like a 50% increase to their siege damage. That's really, actually better than that. So, that's really good. And then cost changed from 80 food and 80 wood changed from 85 wood, so it's 280 80 food, 80 wood, from 85 food, 70 wood. I think that's overall a nerf. Uh, at least in the early game, wood gathers slower than food. Uh, and it is five less food, but 10 more wood. So just from a numbers point of view, I think it's, it's costing more, so it's a nerf. Uh, and then the fact that it's wood that's costing more is probably a one-two punch. So it's a little bit more expensive, maybe a little bit harder to mass up. Definitely does more siege damage. And then you've got one area damage whatever that means however useful that is it's something it is a buff i just don't know how big of a buff that is the drummer no longer affects artillery okay makes sense light infantry collected uh corrected some damage multipliers okay sounds good i'm gonna guess that might be a buff uh maybe some units were missing some things so cool red sea wagon for the somalis can now build the lombards for the italian civ all right not bad good stuff makes them more useful the Royal Hunter. The military upgrade of the Royal Huntsman can now be trained in batches. Oh, that's really nice. The Royal Hunter is a really cool uh, skirmisher unit that doubles as a villager, uh, at least for the at least for the uh, sake of hunting wildlife. And so, I think it's a really nice sort of proto economic military unit. Uh, I see some potential there. And now that well, uh, the hard thing was you had to train them individually. So now it says, I guess after you research the military upgrade. So I'm, I'm guessing that's um, the upgrade that kind of takes it from tier one to tier two. Once you research that, they can now be trained in batches. That's really cool and will help out in, in massive news units, either for military or use it for some mid late game hunting to kind of improve your what would be really great, you mass up these hunters, and then you can send them to the far edges of the map to hunt. And, you know, they get attacked with their military units, so they can uh, you know, withstand that a lot better than Bill's can. The Royal Dragoon for House of Bourbon. Rate of fire improved to 2.5 from 2.75 to reduce the delay of the setup animation. Range damage increased to 18 from 17.5, and line of sight corrected to 20, up from 18. All right, just all-around boost for the Royal Dragoon. Really, really, really nice pickup there for them. Shipments. Corrected the arrival time of several shipments, including all battleship cards now arriving in 60 seconds, up from 40 as intended. The Mercenary Contractor now increases the attack and hit points of Outlaws by 50% as expected. So I'm guessing behind the scenes, this number was off. I don't know whether that makes it better or worse. I don't know what it was. I'm sure, again, somebody could check uh, in-game and maybe leave a comment below if you wanted to, but this politician now doing what it's supposed to do, which I think is great. Good job. The Zapotec Lightning Warrior. Correct an issue resulting in units obtained from some cards having more hit points than those available to the, uh, to the Zapotec. Okay. Cool. 
All right, down to the Sith, let's go. Aztecs, Eagle Scouts, fixed an issue causing the Imperial Age upgrade to be applied to Eagle Scouts in the Industrial Age. Huh. The Imperial Age upgrade to be applied to Eagle Scouts in the Industrial Age. Okay, is that, does that mean the upgrade was available in the Industrial Age? I don't get that. Big, town Center Big Buttons. Lowered the cost of Big Buttons in the Town Center to be in accordance with the new cost of the Jaguar Prowl Knight. Really cool. I think I saw a post on this on the Reddit the other day where they were talking about how the uh, the Tier 2 and 3 versions of the Big Buttons were just... You were actually spending more resources than what you were getting. It was just a, uh, a waste to actually research those texts. So... Looks like they've been fixed now, so that's really good news for the Aztecs. For the Dutch, Dutch State's Army now also makes infinite mercenary cards arrive faster. This is a really nice pickup for the Dutch if you go with a mercenary build. And this is just going to make that card even better. Let me actually pull up really quickly before we move on. What does that card originally do? I've got the game pulled up in the background here. Dutch State's Army. So originally, what it did do and it still does... Mercenaries arrive, train, and move faster, but Dutch infantry and cavalry are now more expensive. It enables Highlanders in the barracks, Royal Horsemen in the stables, and both in the taverns. So it's a really nice card for, um, you know, mercenary play for the Dutch. And now, not only do trainable mercenaries train, arrive, well, I guess that includes shipments, arrive, train, and move faster. Originally, it was not applying to the infinite mercenary cards, now it does, which is pretty cool. And another really nice pickup, Buck Riders. Uh, the Dutch have another card called Highwaymen, which enables the Buck Riders, which is a Dragoon-like unit, uh, to be unlocked in the stables. Those are really awesome units, and now they cost half. 250 coin, down from 500 coin. Really, really, really nice for the Dutch. Ethiopians, Italian Firearms, now affects the Sebastopol Mortar as intended. And Stranger's Quarters is now set to active by default in post period games. Okay, cool. Germans, Prince Electors, fixed an issue with the Oldenburg Royal Hunter, cost no pop slot. Fixed an issue with missing unit upgrades that occurred when also being allied to German royal houses on the map. And I think the one that maybe catches my eye, allying to the same royal house on the map and in the native embassy will now increase the unit build limit. That's really, really nice. I remember playing a game where I was toying around with Prince Electors, and I ran into this issue. I had, um, it might have been Vettin. Vettin on the map, and then I allied to the Vettin. And then I'm like, wait a minute. Well, I've, 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 you know, why is this not improving my build limit? I was stuck. So it made me feel like I wasted the, the card by picking, you know, something that was on the map. So now, doubling down on the same royal house will improve the build limit, uh, which is great. Fantastic. They need that. Hodonoshani. This is really nice. The Aena. That really nice, cheap, early archer unit. Costs 100 food, and that's it. Now it shoots faster the closer the target is, and ranged attacks benefit from target lock. So a really nice combo. You get the, the bowmen up close. They're going to be firing faster, faster, faster. And they get target lock now. So what that means is, is if... Let's say you've got a, a, a military unit. It, it clicks on an enemy to attack. So it starts up its its firing animation. If the unit, the enemy unit, moves outside of your firing range, if you don't have target lock, well then your, your attack is interrupted. You've got to start over from scratch. But if you have target lock, that fire will go off. You will shoot beyond your normal effective range uh, because you have that target lock. So the, the, the attack will proceed. So... Really nice buffs for the Anna. Five, Renegade Tr French, an age four card. Now it sends eight, Gendarme Curassier, up from five. Now it sends, uh, the, the uh, Renegade Dutch card sends 20, Stadswacht Halberdier, up from 11. But it does increase the cost to 1,500 coin. Okay, I still, I think that's a really nice buff. Uh, that's a lot more Curassier. That's a lot more of the Stadswacht Halberdier. 22 Lenape Allies now arrives in 60 seconds, up from 40 as intended. A little bit of a nerf there. The North American trade card moved to age 3. I think... I, I, I don't know the meta. I don't know what the big names play. But from my minimal experience playing with the Hot and the Lakota as well, they get the same benefit. Uh, this is a really nice 
change. What the North American trade does is it gives all of your villagers a trickle of coin as long as they are working on natural resources. So if you have lumberjacks working on trees, hunters working on deer, uh, I guess this would probably include... No, I, it probably would not include the native... Uh, what is it, the tribal marketplace with their, their coin alternative. So as long as they're working on trees or deer uh, or sheep, something like that, they are trickling coin, which is really, really, really nice. Uh, I think it's a nice boost to your economy. And moving it into age three makes a lot of sense. I think you'd want to get that benefit off earlier when there are more natural resources on the map to take advantage of it. So I really like this. I don't know that it necessarily should be the first card you send in age three. Uh, that would depend on the game, I'm sure. But moving it to age three makes a lot of sense, in my opinion. And that's going to really help out the Haudenosaunee and Lakota economy, I think. Also, Covenant Chain. Now, I pulled this Covenant Chain uh, sent. Let me see. It was... It, it's it Basically, it's a, it's a British... Not a mercenary card, but like a, it's a British uh, support army card. So the cost, the card used to cost three thousand coin. Now it only costs two thousand coin. It used to send eight Irish brigadier, four Highlander, three Harquebusier, and two heavy cannons. Yeah, so those are mercs. This is a mercenary card. Now it sends four Irish brigadier, four Highlander, three Harquebusier, and two heavy cannons. So it's fewer units, but at a significantly reduced cost. I think this is a buff, especially because. This is now an infinite card. You can send it over and over and over again. Yeah. So the Haudenosaunee have a really nice benefit to this mercenary card here. I don't know if that makes them late game mercenary players or what, but I like it. Hauza. Fulani Archers. Damage multiplier versus heavy infantry increased to 1.75 from 1.5. So this is a really big buff for the Fulani Archer against the unit they're supposed to be fighting. Right, So if you're using them against the correct counters, archers are supposed to do damage against heavy infantry. Now with the Hausa, they're doing a lot more damage against their chosen counter, heavy infantry. So really nice pickup there. And then this Stranger's Quarters thing. I actually don't, I'll admit, I don't even know what this tech or card is. Uh, and I don't play post-imperial games, so it doesn't really matter to me. But moving on. The Inca. Okay. So the Inca, they, they're starting off their Concha houses. They kind of get a nerf and a buff. The nerf is their hit points have been decreased to 1,600 from 2,000. It's a pretty significant nerf to the HP. So they are going to melt a little bit faster. You better have an army up to protect them. But they also cost less, 170 wood down from 180 wood. So you'll be able to get these Concha houses up easier. And remember, they don't just provide you population limit. They also are providing you a trickle of food. So that is a really nice benefit for the Inca. And I think overall, this is a buff to the Inca instead of a nerf. Monumental Architecture. That was an H2 card. It's moved to H3. I got to say, I don't really understand this one. And if you look at the Monumental Architecture, what it does is it basically improves the hit points of all of your buildings by 30% and then your town center attack by 35%. Or maybe I have it the other way around, but I'm pretty sure that's right. Um, so it, it, it increases your building's HP, and it also uh, increases your town center's attack. Now, for me, I'm kind of focusing on the town center attack part, and it seems like that plus 35% HP, or plus 35% town center attack is more relevant in age 2. Like, I, I could imagine using that as a defensive card to withstand a rush. And I might be wrong about that. I would love some comments below from some better players. When you use these town center defense cards, when is the best time to use those? Uh, because to me, I'm thinking, I want to repel a rush, but maybe, maybe this just makes them more effective against, you know, kind of later age sieges and attacks. Uh, maybe that's the idea. In which case, moving it to age 3, it would still be a good card. In any event, this is undoubtedly a nerf. You're not able to access this in age 3. Um, but I guess just the way my mind works, I think of those as rush repellent cards, which makes no sense if it's in the third age. You'll, you'll be rushed by then, before then. The Royal Festival, big button. This button delivering one maceman per four minutes of the game 
Now costs 250 of each resource, down from 300 food, 400 wood, 500 coin. Huge buff for the Inca. This gives them a really nice, uh, you know, maceman wave if you hold on long enough, and it's costing you a lot less. That's that's really big, big buff. Suspe ceremony, maceman spawn time reduced by roughly 30 percent. So, getting a lot more maceman action out of the Inca. Really, really nice buffs there. I, I've read again that the Inca are a weaker civilization. So, is this what they need to be pulled out from the bottom tiers? I don't know. But it is a really nice buff regardless. And I, I kind of want to play around with the Inca some. I want to learn that civilization. I think that'd be fun to play. The Indians. Azop. Ottoman Consulate. Improved the rendering speed of the visuals. Okay, nice. Dravidian Martial Arts. Fixed an error that granted Sepoy plus 5% melee damage in the volley stance. Okay. Just, you know, fixes. Okay. Italians. Ah. Now, this is one of the two civilizations that the players have been complaining about as being... Just OP. They're too strong. They're too good. There's some strategies with the Italians that are just too hard to combat. And one of those was the Italians and their fast, uh, what do they call Fast Imperial Age. You could just go, you could use your architects to rush up straight into the Fourth Age very effectively. You throw down outposts everywhere with your massive architects and just win the game that way. Well, they have been nerfed very hard, uh, in, specifically in order to deal with this one strategy. So first off, architects are easier to kill. They've got 225 HP now, down from 275. Their build limit has been reduced to 2 from 5, and now increases plus 1 every age up. So eventually, you can get back to that 5 build limit. I guess, let me see, start in 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... So I guess maybe you could even get more Architect in the long run. But regardless, at the point where it matters, you're starting off with only two, you get up to the to three in the next age, and four in the age after that. So you have fewer Architects available to you for the majority of the game. And then, I think what people were complaining about more than anything else were the outposts, the town centers, the walls, kind of these defensive uh, buildings, and they now take longer to build. So this is definitely targeting that one strategy, and we'll see if that's enough to maybe put it in the dirt. I kind of suspect that being unable to train five architects right out of the gate at the start of the game uh, will provide a really, really heavy damper on that Italian strategy. Lakota, North American trade, moved to age three. I've already mentioned this about the Haudenosaunee. I think this is a really nice buff for the Lakota as well. Um, probably because of their TP play. I, I think this might, maybe this will impact the Lakota even more. Honestly, I don't know the Lakota well enough to comment on how this affects them. But I think it's a good buff for them. Mexicans. Barbacoa now correctly causes all livestock to fatten more quickly when gathering from a hacienda. I'm guessing that was not impacting certain livestock. So that's probably a fix. Great job there. Coach guns for the Baja Revolution. Now ships three bandidos and three cuatreros instead of renegados and comancheros. And if you look at my tabs, you will see that I pulled this up because I want to do some research. How does this impact Mexico? Well, if we compare the bandido to the renegado, three bandidos instead of renegados, three cuatreros instead of comancheros, they are basically the exact same unit. Here's your bandido. And if you were to take a look at the stats compared to the renegado, all right, they're almost completely identical. In, in almost every way. The Renegado does apparently have a little bit more resist than the Bandido does. Uh, 25 versus 30. So the Renegado has more. So I guess the Bandido is not quite as tanky as the Renegado is. However, the Renegado, I'm sorry, the Bandido gets access to the Dynamite Demolition Special Ability. And what that is, it automatically activates when attacking with a cooldown of 30 seconds. Throwing dynamite that does area of effect damage, I'm guessing. Does 20 damage. 50 against buildings and ships. 10 against heavy cav. 6 against hand shock infantry. And 5 against artillery. With an area of effect of 3 from a range of 12. So uh, they're opening up the fight with a dynamite bundle. That makes, I think, I think that gives the bandido a significant um, damage multiplier. I think, I think that they do more damage than the renegado. Even if they're a little bit squishier, I think that's an improvement. Likewise, the Cuatrero. 
right here. Cuatrero versus the Comanchero. Um, similar units. They have, again, virtually the same stats. The big difference is the Cuatrero gains access to both the ability to gather food from animals, which the Comanchero does not have, at least not by default. And the Cuatrero also gets access to the big game hunting special ability, throwing a lasso around the enemy, temporarily snaring the target and other enemies in an area of effect of two around the target. So uh, normally to snare something, you've got to be in melee range and you, you have to hit them with that melee attack. But the Cuatrero can actually snare from a distance using the big game hunting ability. This is a really nice buff. And again, I think makes the Cuatrero a better unit than the Comanchero. So this is a pretty significant buff for the Baja Revolution. A revolution. All right. Criollos. Criollo? Criollos? I'm forgetting my Spanish. The double L I think is a wise sound. Criollos. Now arrives in 40 seconds, down from 60 as intended. That is a buff. The plan of Miramare. Now also increases bandido range by 2 as intended. So buffs all around for Mexico. All right. Mexicans getting some really nice buffs there. Good for them. The Ottomans. Azap. Improve the default attack animation. Uh, Capiculu Core. Cost increased to 2,000 food, up from 1,400, but now it also delivers 5 Spahi, up from 4. So you're getting more units out of this card, but it's costing a lot more food. And I think, so it used to be 4, 1,400 divided by 4 was, well, let's see, 1,200 would be, if it were 1,200 food, that would be 300, like 325 food per spahi and now with 2000 food for five spahi you're talking about uh let's say 2000 divided by five so 400 food per spahi so you're actually spending more food per spahi which makes me want to call it a nerf um but i guess you are getting more out of the card so from a just from a more units perspective, that's a buff, but from an economic perspective, it's a nerf. I'm going to say, because you're in age four, it's probably not that big a deal, but I think it might be a nerf. Le let me, again, leave a comment below. Is this a buff or a nerf? What do you guys think about this one? From an economics perspective, it's undoubtedly a nerf, but maybe the fact that you're actually getting more units out of it makes it worth it, possibly. I don't know. I don't know. The Spahi, too, because the Spahi, that's not a, that, that's a unique, that's a rare unit for the Ottomans. You're not able to just get that out of your stables. So maybe the fact that you're getting more does make it worth it, even though you are paying more for them. I don't know. And now we're looking at the Portuguese. And if we take a look here, first off, they start the game with an additional 50 food, which is really nice. Big buff to them. That means they get their early economy going faster. And then they have a, a change to their Constable Home City card. Uh, this is a card that the Portuguese get, which allows them... It, it improves the hit points and the damage of all of their melee units. Now, the Llaneros is a... This is a unit that is unique to Gran Colombia, which is a revolution that Portugal can go into. The Llanero is identical to the Comanchero, but armed with a lance instead of a gun, thus making them more akin to lancers. So it makes you wonder, why then do they have guns in their profile icon? If they do not actually have guns, but use a lance, I digress. The Llanero is, a again, a melee cav unit, so they now are benefited by the Constable card. It's kind of a nice buff if you go Gran Colombia. But then it says, instead of Dragoon Combat. Now, I'm, I'm not quite sure what that means, whether Dragoon Combat no longer affects Llaneros, but now Constable does instead. Maybe that's what that means. Either way, if or maybe Constables were affecting Dragoons, and now they don't, which... They shouldn't, so that makes sense. I'm going to guess Dragoon Combat was a card that was affecting Yaneros. I know Constable does. Moving on. Only a couple more civs left. The Spanish. Vice Royalty of New Spain. The Spanish are another civilization that have absolutely jumped up in popularity because of this new Hacienda Soldado strategy. And I think people were saying that it was a little bit too strong. This is too good. Maybe not quite Italian Fast Imperial good, but really, really good. And I really like that the Spanish have this strategy. I think the Soldado is a fun unit. And I really appreciate that Spain 
had some late game flair and some flavorful, powerful late game strats rather than just relying on the Spanish rushes, which is at least how uh, I learned to play the Spanish and, and sort of what I've seen as the Spanish strengths. They're early game rushers. Well, now they have a late game option, which is pretty cool. But they were seen as maybe a little bit too strong with that strat, so they are now being nerfed appropriately. Vice Royalty of New Spain. Soldados are now balanced with regular combat values. So if I'm reading this right, they're taking a nerf of 10% across the board nerfs to their stats. And they need to be updated manually to guard an Imperial status in the Hacienda. So they're no longer shadow teching through the ages. Note, the Mexico Revolution continues to automatically research guard soldados. So still have a reason to go to Mexico. Uh, that's still a nice bonus. But uh, just saying as the Spanish, that means that their soldados have been nerfed. They're not quite as overwhelmingly strong as they used to be, which I think makes a lot of sense. If you took a look at those Soldados stats, they were insane. So bringing them down to, you know, a little bit more of a manageable level, I think is a good thing. Spanish Square corrected an issue that allowed sending this card a second time in the Imperial Age. All right, well, that's a fix. Swedes, Gustavian Guards, this is one of their unique church texts. Gustavian Guard, cost increased to 1700 from 1500 this is a card that sent 16, I'm forgetting if it was Guard Halberdier or Veteran Halberdier, but they sent 16 Halberdier. Uh, so now this is costing a little bit more food and overall nerf uh, to the Swedes here. Um, I don't know how central the Gustavian Guard's strat, uh, uh, tech is to any particular strat, but this is definitely a nerf. And then the United States. These are some fun buffs. Dutch Immigrants. Cost reduced to 300 coin from 350 coin. So... Uh, this is a card that you send that gives the United States a bank. It's pretty cool, and now it costs less coin. French Immigrants, another age one card. Maybe you want to set up your economy a little bit differently. The French Immigrants card improves the hit points and the damage of all of your villagers and also sends three to Courier de Bois. And now that, that card costs 225 wood instead of 250 wood. So it'll be easier to get your U.S. eco going if you go in that direction. I like it. Finally, in age three, Oklahoma Black, Black Mesa. That ships a coal prospector wagon, so you get like a, a coal mine in your base, and five gunslingers, and it enables your gunslingers to mine. So you can basically use those military units as vills to improve your economy. If you're sitting around, you know, waiting to attack, might as well put them to work, right? Well, now that's an age three card. It costs 200 wood, down from 500 wood. So way easier to get that coal on the map. Get those gunslingers out and fighting as well. And I think at 200 wood, that is a steal. That's a really nice card. A really nice one. All right, and with that, that covers what's currently on the public update preview for the small April patch, the post Noob Cup patch. Leave me some comments. Let me know what you think. How do you like these changes? For now, this is the Iron Kaiser signing off.